Thank you very much, Amele. Um, you're also an artist, not only an ethicist. So uh, uh, I'm looking forward also to next webinar on ethics and art with you. Uh, now, yes, uh, it was only a year ago when somebody said, uh, but you are an artist. I said, I never call myself an artist. I just do something which uh, is important for me to express. But uh, I said, yeah, if you want to call me, uh, do it. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to share uh, a few slides. And I ask you to be <clears throat> relaxed on your chair, but also sitting uh, um, concentrated and focused. Why I say that? Because uh, what I want to do in this uh, 15 minutes is more a kind of personal journey with you. Uh, I call it a personal spiritual journey. <clears throat> I want to be honest about my own journey on that. And uh, you will see that faith plays a role in all that. And in my understanding of uh, art and ethics and how they are linked. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the, I say uh, ethics and art are two expressions with one goal. Ethics is uh, trying to get orientation, to keep orientation, what is good and bad, right and wrong. Very simple definition. We need orientation, how to act, how to decide, and especially new uh, complex situations. Uh, artificial intelligence, bioethics, war, uh, whatever uh, complexity of today's world. What is art? Transforming the perception of the visible, making the invisible visible. That's my uh, simple definition. That means art tries to look at what we see and look behind it, look it, at it with different eyes. We have seen that in the two video clips at the beginning. Artists are transforming the perception and help us then to see things sharper, different. And of course, we will see how that is linked to ethics. Now, for me, ethics and art are two expressions of one goal, how to liberate energy for transformative action. Uh, I'll... Uh, explain what I mean with that. <clears throat> Many people think uh, ethics is about you should and you should not and uh, uh, the Ten Commandments and the list of uh, uh, climate action uh, uh, commandments and so on. But uh, my uh, goal of ethics, and I do it since now over 40 years, in a professional way uh, is not so much to say you shall, but you can. Because the key issue is that we all more or less know what we should do, even in complex topics like bioethics. But uh, we are not able to do what we know what we should do. As Paul in the New Testament already said, we, do, we know what we do, should do, but we do the best. And I think that's the moral dilemma that we all have when we come to ethics. So the question is not only to give guidance, but to give the energy to do the good that we recognize is the good. And that is linked to, we should, uh, my, my uh, effort in ethics and also in art is not to show the disasters of the world, we know it for more than we know. We have the nightmares. We know the climate warming. We know the wars. We know the destruction, but longing for the future, provoking the dreams. The end of my first book I wrote in 79, it was my master thesis. I closed it. It was on a new lifestyle and I closed it with congratulations. It's a transformation of the uh, Sermon on the Mount. Uh, blessed are those who. Jesus did not say you should do this and this and this, but those who 
keep for peace. Those who do justice, they are blessed and they are happy. So that was the encouragement I learned from Jesus right away in the New Testament. And uh, at the end of my last, second last book, uh, 2020, Global Balance, I closed it with, I have a dream. And you know the famous dream of Martin Luther King, the dream of uh, Mandela and others. So that is the, the goal. And now let's go a, de a step deeper even. The SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. I have another definition, which is 500 years older of SDG, Soli Deo Gloria, all glory to God alone. And it's here in Geneva, uh, three kilometers from my office in the Ecumenical Center, where John Calvin wrote his books and every book he signed at the end with SDG, Soli Deo Gloria. What did he say with that? He said, even I'm a writer, I'm an ethicist, I'm an author, I'm a reformer, but at the end of the day, if it's not serving, to glorify our creator, it's all uh, worthless. And I, uh, one of my dear sentences of Helder Kamara, he wrote uh, 30, 40 years ago, I want to be a puddle of water and mirror the sky. Imagine this, this sentence, just a simple part of water on the street, but we can mirror heaven. So this simplicity and modesty, and that's why by preparing, uh, preparing of today, I said to myself, I should call, I should change all my titles, professor, doctor, doctor, I have now two, two honorary doctors even, but uh, I think the better expression would be assistant teacher of ethics. Why assistant? Because, in a religious perspective, God is the true teacher. The true wisdom is not my wisdom. But as an assistant teacher, I try to understand this wisdom and transfer and communicate this wisdom. And that's my task as ethicist. And assistant artist, uh, not artist, but assistant artist, because God, the creator, is the true artist. I just modestly want to admire and express thankfulness by showing the beauty. So the simple question I want to ask in every activity is in line with, is it in line with the will of this giver of life? Does it express my thankfulness? This may sound now very pious and simple, but it's the older I am, the more my deep conviction, simplicity, Modesty is the core of ethics and of art. <clears throat> now, let me uh, show a few examples. Uh, <clears throat> invisible, visible. This is a, a, tr a trinity. I have it even here beside me. Um, you may see it. It's a piece uh, maybe 40 centimeters high out of copper. The source of my energy, the invisible visible. God, Father, Mother, she is creator in form of the tree here. God, Jesus Christ, he is liberator in form of the empty cross. God, Holy Spirit, she is the innovator in form of the Tao. So what was the goal of this little piece <clears throat> is to express the thing that cannot be expressed, the invisible visible. Another example, <clears throat> longing. You know this uh, famous sentence of Saint Exupery, if you want to build a ship, teach the longing for the endless sea. If you don't want to see the sea, why should you build a ship on the sea, for the sea? The same with ethics. If you want to change behavior by ethics, awaken the longing for the better world. That's why I'm always looking at these biblical texts of the kingdom of God. 
it's a vision. It's a vision of where the world could go. The prophets and Jesus' vision of the kingdom of God. This sculpture is about uh, two meters high, one and a half meters high. It's from a, from a piece of wood from a tree. I call it longing for the moon. And I invite you to a very simple exercise. If you sit on your chair, uh, try to imagine this move. Raise your hands and imagine you want to long to the moon or the sun or the stars. And you stretch and stretch and stretch. If we don't long for the moon, we will lose our mission and we will not be able to improve our behavior. So longing, dreaming, not as a dreamer, but a visionary is key and this and art can help us in longing and dreaming. A third example, compassion and Manoj mentioned empathy and compassion at the end of his speech. So if we say you should reduce CO2 emissions, I taught that since literally 40 years, our climate actions in 1975, 1977, and we are still not doing what we know since decades what we should do. So it's not enough energy to act if we just repeat the you shall. Empathy and compassion leads me to suffer with trees, fishes, animals, wind, as I'm part of the whole creation. So it's this liberating energy. And this uh, simple cross, I call it the crucified creation. <clears throat> When I cut, had to cut the tree, uh, it was a broken branch. And I suddenly said, oh, that's, that's the beginning of a cross of the crucified creation. So you see that as an expression of compassion. When we look at that, I hope that it provokes us the empathy to the whole of creation as energy giver for action. And the next one, the fourth one, the beauty of simplicity. Simplicity is the perfection of complexity. We see the complexity of these videos at the beginning. It was too, for me, too complex. I'm looking now for what is behind the complexity. And simplicity is the perfection of complexity. And I try to say, how can I make a candle holder with the most simple way? You see here a candle holder with a simple leaf and one cut, a cut uh, in this. I have it here. It's a very simple, small thing. Simplicity has the perfection of complexity. How can I make a candle holder without nails, without uh, sewing, without uh, a lot of things, just one simple piece of metal and one cut, which is then to hold it. So again, the value of simplicity expressed by art, which then should encourage us to see also the simplicity in ethics and lifestyle. <clears throat> and the fifth example, before I come to the end, the beauty of age. We all know this difficulty of with old people, they smell bad, they are in hospital, we, don't, we, we are really not uh, in favor of that, we better turn to the young generation. But the face of an old person is beautiful with dignity. So this photo of um, dry amaryllis 
it was just an amaryllis in our home, which was dry. And when, when we put the light behind, this is the photography. What is the message? I want to support elderly people in their dignity. Age has its beauty and its dignity. So again, values and art go together. So that's just a few things and you can further deepen that in my publications, in my artworks. And um, in a uh, few days, we will have a video about my artworks that you can download then uh, from my uh, website. Thank you so much.